Today I'll show you how to install an Articat tether on your 2014 to 2016 Articat M series snowmobile. First thing you're going to want to remove your side panels. That's fairly simple. Everyone should be able to do that. And then we need to get your hood off. So to get the hood off, you're going to have two Torx heads that are down here by the belly in the front by the bumper. You're going to have a Torx head right there and one up here higher on the hood. And they should be T20 or T25 Torx heads. Next, the harness for your hood is going to be sitting under this diamond plated plastic piece. If you don't already have your um, goggle warmer bag here, if you have a goggle warmer bag, you can just take that out and reach in. On mine, I was able to just take this piece out and your harness clip go is right here. It's pretty easy to unclip. If you can't get this piece off, grab from the back of your hood right here, pull up a little bit till it comes loose, then lift up on the front and then you can squeeze your hand up in here far enough where you can detach the harness and then just remove the whole hood in the same action. To remove the seat, you're gonna to wanna to remove these side panels and those are as simple as just undoing these, twisting them out and that will release these side panels, do one on each side and then you got a T20 Torx right here on each side. Once those are released, grab your seat from wherever you can get a good hold on it, from usually from the back here underneath. And then I usually sometimes will just stand on the sled and grab the whole seat in itself and pull back hard. And it's pretty hard because it's Velcroed underneath, but it'll come out. Just give it a pretty good yank. Next, you're going to want to remove the part of the console that affixes to your fuel tank and to do that you just got four bolts one two three and four that you need to take out disconnect these wires from the um backup alarm that you know makes a sound when you're backing up and also there's going to be this piece that sits on here if you have the special tool use the special tool because these things are really easy to break and you can see i marred mine up but i just used a big pair of a uh, pliers for it and I was able to get it to come off and then this whole piece comes off. Next thing is moving your fuel tank back. I've heard that you can kind of just loosen it and scoot it back but I just disconnected everything so I'd have room to work. So to start you're going to want to unplug this on the side then you got your fuel line up here and there's like a clip that goes right there and I broke mine but luckily you can go to any auto parts store and pick those up. I'll show them to you right now get those you can break it if you want comes off easy and then you got your fuel tank everything unhooked except your two brackets that come on the side of your tank like this and down to the tunnel and those can just be taken off with a 10 millimeter socket and then those just come off and then your gas tank can allow be allowed to slide back after the fuel tank slid back your main harness will sit down here and it'll be zip tied to your coolant tank. So what you're going to want to do is cut that zip tie and then unplug your main harness. This goes up to the handlebars and then this goes down lower. And what we're installing here is this aftermarket part. And it's got two pins that you have to take out of this connector. You have to press them out the back and then replug in the two new pins, these ones, into the harness and then the two old ones that you had pushed out of here you will put them side by side colors matching on the same size on the new connector now the way now this is probably the hardest part of the job is getting the old pins pushed out and the way i found it was easiest to do it is first you have to start you have to pry take a small flathead like this and pry up until this releases you can see how it hangs out the top of this a little bit. When you're finished, you'll press that back down and that locks the wires in. And so once you get that up, I took a, this, it's just a blow dart, but a lot of people use paper clips and that works well. And it's going to be these two top wires that um, you need to push out. And they're going to be on the top left hand side if you're holding the connector in the two ears and the clip are down here. And the way I did it was as I inserted this into there and it goes in pretty far like wiggle it in as far as you can and start wiggling up and down 
while keeping a little bit of pressure on the wire you're trying to take out, eventually you'll hear or feel like a clip, and then the wire will come out. And then you'll just pull that wire out, move on to the next one. And then once you got that, you'll insert both these two new wires, they're color-coded, they're the same as in the harness, back into their appropriate spots. And then the two old wires from the um, old harness, you'll plug right into the corresponding sides. Along with that, make sure you also pop this up before you push the old wires in. And then press it back down. And then also make sure this one gets pressed back down like that so it's not hanging out anymore. Next, what you're going to want to do is drill the hole for where the tether is actually going to sit. And to do that, I covered it with masking tape so I was able to measure and draw on it. And then it also helps with the plastic getting messed up when you actually drill. So when you do this, you would measure seven eighths of an inch from this side in and I made a couple marks and I just drew a straight line and then I took the center of the bolt hole right here put a mark in it then you measure an inch and three quarters from that center point and then wherever those two lines intersect is where you're going to drill the hole and then this hole is going to have to be a half an inch big for your for that little clicker like that for that little clicker to go through it's threaded and it sits like that after you get your hole drilled for where the tether is going to sit we're going to go ahead and we're going to clip your main harness back into where it was clipped into and you're going to take a zip tie and i found that this is really short for where it sits because it comes up and sits like this so you're going to want to run the wires along the more left hand side and so make sure you pull up your harness put a zip tie around it so it holds it firm to this bottle and then clip this part in that goes up to your harness all the way and you've got this that you'll have to this connector that you put in and a lot of people say that these come loose and that's been a problem so you could probably either run a small zip tie in between here to keep it tight I'm gonna wrap mine up with some electrical tape to keep water out and make sure this holds together and we'll get back after I do that when we get to move the tank forward and make sure that this is sitting in the appropriate spot. Okay, so I've got the connector taped up. So there's no way that this is going to, you know, loosen up over time when we're riding. Because that would ruin a good day. It's time to move our fuel tank back up. And what we need to be careful of is when we're moving this back up, that we're not going to be pinching any of these. Try to make sure, you know, that these are pressed out of the way as best as we can. And so when we start moving this tank back up, if this thing would stay there for me, I'm doing this with one hand, so it's kind of tough, that when we start sliding this tank back up, I'm going to want to make sure that everything's aligning right and that we're not going to be pinching those wires or it's going to be rubbing against them and, you know, maybe causing the wires to rub through over time or something like that. So now that I got the tank back in place, I reinstalled the bars that hold the tank and I've already checked to make sure none of this stuff was getting rubbed on or, you know, going to be pinched or anything like that. So make sure this is sitting up like this. Make sure all your lines are unpinched. Then install your bars that hold the tank in. There will be four bolts, 10 millimeter heads. Make sure you clip back in your fuel. I put my new clip back in there. Then also the wire that runs down here. Make sure you plug that back in. Okay, so now that we've got the gas tank in place, we need to put the front part of your console on. So just run the wires up to where your tether goes. Install this. Make sure this gets good and tight. And then you're going to install this. Make sure you put your two Torx heads back in. And also while you're here, clip in the wires for this. So I got my seat back on. Got the bolts in. Side panels on. I checked, this is tight, nothing's caught up in here. I plugged that back in. I took one more good look, just make sure I got everything, all the bolts were tight. Now just finish putting your hood on and your side panels and test it and you're set to go. Thanks guys.